Howdy y'all, in this video we will learn how to create a simple headless WordPress application using Next.js 13 and WP GraphQL. This video assumes a basic understanding of React, Next.js 12, and WordPress. We're going to use the prepared GitHub repo, which will allow us to focus on points specific to Next 13 and some of its new features as shown on the slide. Let's dive right in. To get started, we'll need to make sure that we have both Node.js and NPM installed. In order to make this work, we need to be on Node.js 16.14 or later. So let's go ahead and check. I'm in my terminal here and I'm going to run node-v. All right, that's good there. I'm on 20.5.1. And then let me just check my NPM version. 9.8, perfect, we're good there. The next thing we need to do is configure our WordPress site. Going over to WP Admin here, the only thing that we're going to need plugin-wise is we're going to install and activate the WP GraphQL plugin and activate debug mode for it. I've already done this here, but if you have not yet, you can just go to add new on the plugins page, search for WP GraphQL, and it will pop right up. Once you've done that and downloaded it and activated it, let's go to the GraphQL settings on the side menu. And if I scroll down, we're going to enable GraphQL debug mode, which I've already done. Save the changes. Now we need to check the permalink settings because all the code in this article and video assumes that you have the post name option selected for your permalinks. So let's check this. Go ahead to general settings on the side menu. Click under permalinks and I've already checked post name. Save changes and we're good to go on there. In this video, I've created five posts, well, more than five posts, and I'm a bit of a Star Wars nerd because we will be querying for the first five posts from WP GraphQL. So make sure that y'all have five, at least five posts and even more in your post types. That's all we needed to configure the WordPress site. Let's go ahead and set up Next.js 13. So the rest of this tutorial is based on the files on my GitHub repo, and I'll leave it in the YouTube channel um, post, but this is the page of my repository for the headless WordPress example, and it's based on the default Next.js template created with create next app at latest CLI, and with some additional scaffolding and styles I added on my own using the Tailwind CSS utility framework. Essentially, just clone down the repo locally, CD into that directory, and then npm run install once you clone this down. Now, the next thing you're going to have to do is in the root of the project, create a .env.local file and add the following key and value, which is the next public GraphQL endpoint, which looks like this. If I go over to Visual Studio Code, I have the project up. I'm in my env local file, which I created, and you're just going to add the GraphQL endpoint, which you can get from your WordPress admin right over here on the GraphQL settings, you're gonna place that right there. Let's go ahead and do that. See what this looks like on the browser. Run npm run dev. Let's go back to the browser and it's off port 3000. There we have it. We have our first five posts from our WordPress backend being pulled onto our homepage. Okay, before we dive into the repository and code for this example walkthrough, let's quickly define the new paradigm structure in Next.js 13. Going over back to Visual Studio Code, let's go ahead and take a look at the structure here. In the root of the project, Next.js 13 uses what is called the app router. 
In previous versions of Next.js, they used what is called the pages directory. The app router is represented by a top level folder in the project named app. Within the app folder, you nest other folders to define routes, and the files inside these folders are used to define the UI. By default, all of the files create the app router are React server components. The pages router in Next.js 12 utilized a file-based router built on the concept of pages. When a file is added to the pages directory, it's automatically available as a route. In this new app router, in comparison, handles the overall routing and navigation for your entire application. It is responsible for rendering the correct pages based on the URL and managing the transition between pages. A folder defines a route in this system. A route is a single path of nested folders from a root folder down to a leaf folder, which will include files that are used to create the UI. Now, route segments are commonly called route segments since they are folders. Dynamic routes are referred to as dynamic segments. When you create a route, you add it to the app directory. When you want that route to be dynamic, you add brackets around the name of that folder, which is very similar to Next.js 12. The difference is that Next.js 12 uses files for this, whereas Next.js 13 uses folders. Let's take a look at that in action. For example, here we have app, then we have the post route, and then dynamically we have that route segment, which is dynamic, wrapped around brackets, and then the page.jsx file will render on the UI whatever is passed in as a parameter for that URI, whatever data from WordPress is coming. Now, if you wanted to bypass a route, you would simply wrap parentheses around it and that tells Next.js to not add it as a route in the URL. An example would be if you wanted a folder to be named dashboard, but not part of the URL, you would just simply wrap parentheses around it as I have this auth route segment here, but I do not want it to be part of the URL. I've wrapped parentheses around it. Now folders and files in Next 13 represent the route and path of what you will see in the URL, as I mentioned. Now files, on the other hand, are used to create the UI and are rendered on the browser in relation to the route segment they are nested in. The file conventions are provided by Next 13 to create a UI with specific behavior and nested routes. In our project example, we have page, loading, and layout with the extension .jsx. If you're using TypeScript, you would do .tsx and then just regular JavaScript is .js. With data fetching, Next extends the Fetch Web API to allow you to configure the caching and revalidating behavior for each fetch request on the server. React extends Fetch to automatically memoize fetch requests while rendering a React component tree. You can use fetch with async await in server components, in route handlers, and in server actions. In our example, which you'll see here shortly, we will use the fetch API to grab data from our WP GraphQL endpoint. Now, rendering server and client components in Next 13 allows you the capability to create hybrid applications so that parts of the code can be rendered on the server or the client. By default, components in Next 13 are React server components that are rendered on the server and can be optionally cached on it. This is now the default render method and there are many benefits to doing the rendering on the server. Our example will take advantage of the benefits it gives for data fetching and caching. Now that we have that understanding of the new paradigm shift in Next.js 13, let's dive into our repository to see it in action. Let me go over to the home page at the root of the app route folder. We have a page.jsx file, and this file represents the home page of the site. Let me close that here. At the top of the file, we are going to use the client side navigation within the next link component and the suspense component from React to handle asynchronous data loading and a custom loading state here. Now, in order to fetch our data, this component by default is a React server component, and we define an async function named getPost, where we are pulling the first five posts out of WordPress with a title content and URI. Then we await a get request down here, 
using fetch to grab data from the WP GraphQL endpoint. This request will be cached on the network and not the Next.js server. In the object, we have the content type header and the next.revalidate property, which is set to zero. And this will bypass the cache and tell Next.js to have everything fetched upon every request. After that, we deserialize the JSON response and extract the data field, returning the nodes and post down here. Lastly, we return the JSX and the link needed to allow the user to click on the post title and excerpt to go to its detail page and wrap the component needed. This gets us the data we rendered on the browser, which we saw earlier upon in the setup. Staying in the root of the app folder, we see the new naming file convention. These conventions are special files that tell Next.js what behavior to execute in the UI. In the old pages router, you could name a file whatever you wanted it to be and still use it as an actual layout that functioned as a wrapper for your application. We have a layout component here that wraps any page component in the application, and this automatically happens when you create a layout.jsx file. This layout file and this is a layout file and it is named layout. We also have a navbar file that is being imported from the components folder in the layout file. And that is from here. The other file to notice is named loading.jsx, which is our custom loading component. This is the file convention naming as well that Next.js 13 uses. Now, in order to give users the ability to click on a post from our homepage and navigate them to a single post detail page, we need to add a folder that represents the route and URL of that dynamic path first. In our project, we add it to the root of the app directory and call it post. So here's the root of the app directory and here's the post folder. The post folder, the post folder will represent the route segment in the URL and then we need to add a dynamic route segment to this in order to grab a single post and its details via whatever param we specify. In this project, we will grab it by its URI. In the post folder, we create another nested folder called URI here and wrap brackets around it. This tells Next to make this dynamic as we stated earlier and segment to be passed as the params prop to the page. Now that we have the route segment set up and the parameter dynamically set, we need to create the UI with a file for this route. We do this by adding the page.jsx file in the nested URI folder within the post folder as we, we did here. Let's break down what's going on in this code. This is actually very similar to the code on our homepage, except the WP GraphQL query is grabbing a single post via its URI that takes an ID parameter and the query string fetches a single post by its URI. Then we set up a variables object containing the URI here. In the execution of the fetch request, we use the post method and the next revalidate method is set to 60, which tells next to use the time-based revalidation every 60 seconds. I wanted to show an example of the optionality you can have in Next 13 at the function level on caching time-based revalidation and method request, which is why I added these here. Lastly, the main functional component renders the JSX onto the browser when we visit a post link detail. Now let's see this all work live on the browser. Let me clear this out and then run this in a build or production state. So we're gonna build the application. Then we're gonna start it up. Here it is. And when I visit a link within the home page, it links right to the dynamic single details post page of that actual title. Stoked, this works. 
Wrapping this up, Next13 is a new version of the most used meta framework on top of React. It introduces new ways to handle data, create routes and files, as well as rendering methods. Mix it with headless WordPress and WP GraphQL, and you have a super stoked combination. We hope you have a better understanding of how it all works together after watching this video. Stay tuned for more Next.js 13 and headless WordPress content coming soon. As always, stoked to hear your feedback and any questions you might have on headless WordPress, hit us up in our Discord and happy coding.